Hello everybody, Adam Lusek here, and today we're going to be looking at summarizing technical documents given limited context windows. So what does that mean and why might that be useful? Well to start, the context window is sort of the amount of tokens that one can input into the um, these large language model inputs all at once. <clears throat> we're seeing things here like GPT-4 Turbo has a context window of 128,000 tokens, got things like Mistral Large that has a um, context window of 32,000 tokens. And then we've got like Gemini 1.5, which comes standard at 128,000 tokens, but is shooting up now to upwards of 1 million token input, they claim. And the reason that this is important is because a lot of documents, since they are split up into tokens to be ingested by the language model, can get really, um, token usage heavy really quick, especially if you want to summarize or work with a large document. And a note about the inputs as well is that actually behind the scenes, a lot of the times these documents aren't being ingested all at once into these models. They're using something called chunking or splitting up these documents and splitting up the um, input into workable chunks of tokens so that it can then go through sequentially without having to um, use all of the processing power of looking at everything all at once. And some of the ways that this is built into things like Langchain is you can actually use these text splitters when um, running through documents, things like recursive text splitters where you go through a bunch of um, related pieces of text and try and keep them together but split them into smaller amounts, things like HTML where you can do it by, um, by different dividers, Markdown specific code, literal code, you can also define explicitly how many tokens you'd want. This helps with sort of dealing with those aforementioned larger documents and some of those more technical lengthy documents that one might come across in their day to day. But one of the bigger issues too is that not everyone has access to these fancier models, things like the 32k context windows, especially not the 1 million context windows. And even if we look at like the last generation of models with GPT-4, its context window is around 8,000 tokens. And then even GPT-3.5 Turbo has a context window of 4,096 tokens. And this can get really, really small really quick if you want to process a lot of text. To show an example of this um, and how it might actually come into play, if we look at this Intersight Workload Optimizer Getting Started Guide from Cisco, available on their website, and just copy all of this text, it's about a 20-page document when converted into PDF form. And then we can go over to OpenAI's Tokenizer, where you can actually see how it's going to be split up into the tokens. And we see that all of this text comes out to about 4,173 tokens. You can also see this really cool graphic sort of thing about how it's actually splitting up all of this text into different tokens. But as you can tell, 4,173 tokens is still more than things like GPT 3.5 Turbo, the last generation, would be able to um, would be able to handle all at once. So to give a bit of an explanation and a little bit of a project into actually figuring out how some of these um, things behind the scenes split up the documents, I thought it might be fun to put together something myself and see if it works. Additionally, if you're doing this for a lot of documents, you'd want to use sort of a cheaper model, things like GPT 3.5 Turbo, which have a very low price per token consumption cost, instead of using sort of those bigger, fancier ones for the more advanced, um, for more advanced use cases. So I put together this quick code that we'll go through now to show a little bit about my reasoning behind it and see what some of the output it can give me is. I'm not gonna choose too big of a worksheet, but I downloaded this one, the Cisco Intersight Workload Optimizer Datasheet in keeping with the Intersight theme from here on their website. And this is a pretty gnarly document. It's got a lot of things and a lot of problems that we're gonna have to solve. The first being things like pages with not a lot of text, things that are just like contents or different um, different chapters. And then it goes directly into the actual text here. It's a good eight pages long and 
has a lot of information that I certainly don't understand, but we want to then summarize this and chunk it into workable chunks so that we don't have to overload one sort of input to get that output. The first step then is of course loading that document and Langchain from their Langchain community package has this wonderful Py PDF loader where you can load a PDF with Python very easily. So all I did here was specify the document path and then instantiate the loader with Py PDF loader onto the document path. This will create an object of the PDF, which we can then use the function load and split to create a list of pages. From that, I have a different list, pages content, where I append all of the pages into there so that I only get the content from them as it's currently in a little bit of a strange object form right now. But at the end, we'll then have this pages content list that has the text of every single page. The next step then is of course, making sure that we set up our language model correctly to be able to accept inputs, prompt it correctly, and then have everything be able to be output into a nice workable format. For that, I'll be using Langchain and their OpenAI plugin. And then a few things here, we're gonna be using the chat prompt template to correctly format our prompt, runnable pass through so that we can insert the pages into the prompt and then the string output parser so that the output from the LLM can be converted directly into a string format. And then of course, I'll be grabbing our OpenAI API key from the environment um, variable that it's defined in. The rest of how you set this up can then be actually a little bit creative. I'll be using the string output parser. So I instantiate it here with just the string output parser function. The model then is going to be using chat OpenAI from Langchain with the temperature set to zero and the model being GPT-4 Turbo. And then the summarization prompt is where I actually get a little bit more specific into what I'm looking for. So since I'm doing very technical documents and trying to maintain sort of a lot of that context and a lot of the important parts there, this is what I came up with. You are a document summarization tool assisting a user in summarizing a given document. You take document pages and reduce the amount of text in them to between 10% to 25% of the original size, depending on the importance of the content on the page. Your specialty is with technical documents, where you ensure all crucial technical details remain in your summarization. Accuracy is key, and you excel at maintaining the important and technical details while ignoring unnecessary text like page numbers and copyrights. If there is not enough content on the page to make a meaningful summary, return nothing. You do not interact with the user. You ingest the page contents and return only the subsequent summarization text in short plain text paragraph format. Here's the page contents. And then in brackets, here I define page, which we'll be getting down to here with a runnable pass through. And this line here, if there is not enough content on the page to make a meaningful summary, return nothing, was my attempt to sort of try and solve an issue that I started running into when setting this up. See, if you look at some of these pages, just the title page. It has some logos, it says like data sheet, Cisco public, has a copyright and the page number, but then it just has this. And how is one supposed to summarize just the title? Well, I tried a little bit with this um, line here, and as it turns out, it wasn't a big fan of actually returning nothing. See, these models are very tuned to return something. They want to generate. That's why it's generative AI. So I'll actually get to what I did to fix this a little bit later, but to go through the rest of how this was actually set up, the summarization prompt was then defined with the chat prompt template from template um, function here, passing through this summarization prompt. And then creating the actual chain, I used Langchain common expression, la expression language where I define page as a runnable pass-through so that when I invoke this chain, I can pass a variable to it, which will be the given page text. It then goes through the summarization prompt, sent to the model, and then parsed by our output parser into a string. So the way that I actually dealt with these pages, not necessarily having a lot of text, is that I realized, you know, if they don't have that much text, then what really is the point in summarizing them? I might as well just paste in the plain contents of the page since it's not that much. So for this main summarization script, that's exactly what I did. Let me walk through it real quickly. So I first create a blank list 
called summarization, which I'll work with to build the document later. And then I iterate through all of the pages in the pages content that we got up here where we loaded and split the document and extracted all of the text here. I then check if the length of the page is less than or equal to 600 characters. And I chose 600 characters relatively arbitrarily. It's just what I thought might um, capture some of these lesser text heavy pages. It will then just print out this. The page content not summarized due to insufficient length, paste in the raw text of the page, and then define that it is resuming the summarization. It then takes that and appends it to the summarization. If it is greater than 600 characters, it will instead pass it through and invoke the chain that we defined up here, causing the reaction of going through all of the model and everything with the given page that we're on. It then takes that summarization that is generated and appends it to the summarization in order. That will then give us a list of the summarization or just this plain copy paste into in order of the pages into this list. Following that, I just have a really quick script right here using the docx Python package um, to build out a quick Word document. So for every single item in the summarization list, it just adds it as a paragraph and then saves it here. So just ran that real quick and let's see what the actual output was. As expected, these pages here with very little text, like the title and the contents, were just pasted in right here. We can see that my disclaimer, that it was not summarized due to insufficient content is apparent here. Just pastes it in right there and then will tell me when it's resumed. Similarly, it does it for the second page again right away. And we see that. But then it gets into the meaty part and starts the actual summarization. So it'll go through and actually take some of these words and a lot of the sort of limitations that it has is it's not necessarily looking at the document, right? So it can't necessarily pick up on pictures, can't pick up on graphics. This is just purely taking the insights from the text. So while it can see that there are tables here, it won't necessarily one-to-one -one say that there's a table here. It will instead go through and s sort of show a little bit of what the different um, what the different things are saying here, not necessarily in a feature benefit specific way. It also goes here and does figure out from this table that it should maybe make a list. And instead of saying like essentials, it enables customers to optimize hybrid cloud infrastructure both on-prem and in public cloud. You know, it says on-prem and public cloud, supporting compute, hyper-converged systems summarizes it pretty well. Also goes through with some system requirements here in a paragraph instead. And then a little thing about ordering information. Looks like it doesn't necessarily go into the part numbers here specifically. And so looking at this, this was about an eight page document and we ended up with something that was three pages. If we look specifically at the word count, it was 948 words here in our summarization. And then for this PDF, that actually ends up being about 1880 words. So it about halved the document and summarized a lot of this stuff into a more readable format. If we just look at specifically, here we go, come on. If we just look at specifically the summarized text, that comes out to about 842 words. So it just about chopped off a thousand words, which isn't exactly the 10% to 25% that I was looking for, but still better than reading a full eight page document with all sorts of stuff if you need just a quick overview of what's being said. So what we're really seeing here at the end of the day is that a lot of these models have the ability to do these, but it might be better instead of trying to make them all do one sort of big summarization task at once to do a lot of small summarization tasks and then put them together. This is what a lot of these bigger models are doing behind the scenes, but if we explicitly state it, we can get a little bit more granular, a little bit more um, higher fidelity actually in looking at and maintaining a lot of these technical details, especially when looking at super technical documents like this one from Cisco. 
in here, we sort of also addressed things like smaller pages where we just took it and copied and pasted it on and saw some pretty decent outputs here. So hope this taught you something. Hope this spurred some ideas and innovation. And thank you for watching.